Hello everyone. My name is Shraddha Tone. I am assistant professor in computer engineering department in AISMS IOIT. In last lecture, we have seen the classes of IP network addressing. In that, we have seen the class full addressing. Now, in this series, we will see the next part that is classless addressing related to IPv4 address. So let's move towards the topic. Actually, the question comes that why this classless addressing has comes in mind. So the flaws in classful addressing scheme combined with the fast growth of the internet that leads to the near depletion of available addresses. Yet the number of devices on the internet is much less than 2 raised to power 32 address space. We have run out of class A and B addresses and a class C block is too small for most mid-size organization. So one solution that has elevated the problem is the idea of classless addressing. Classful addressing which is most absolute is replaced with the classless addressing. So to overcome the address depletion and give more organizations access to the internet, classless addressing was designed and implemented. So in this part we will see some points about classless addressing. Actually there are no classes but the addresses are still granted in a blocks. So, First of all, we will see how the address blocks. In classless addressing, when an entity, small or large, needs to be connected to the internet, it is granted a block, that means range of addresses. The size of the block means the number of addresses varies based on the nature of the size of entity. For example, a thousand or we can say that a household may be given only two addresses, then a large organization may be given thousands of addresses and ISP that is internet service provider as the internet provider may be given thousands or hundreds of or thousands based on the number of customers. So it may serve. So this is the uh, variable addresses that we can give according to the uses of the organizations. So but to provide the addresses the internet authority imposed three restrictions on these classless addresses blocks. First is the address in a block must be continuous one after another. Second the number of addresses in a block must be power of two. Third the first address must be evenly divisible by the number of addresses. As we can see in this figure, this figure shows the blocks of addresses in both binary and dotted decimal notations which granted to a small business that need 16 addresses. So we can see that the restrictions are applied to this block. The addresses are contiguous. The number of addresses is a power of 2 and the first addresses is divisible by 16. So, which when divided by 16 results in 215,024,210. So, this is the restriction that Internet authorities applies on the classless address blocks. So, we will see about the mass. A better way to define a block of addresses is to select any address in the block and the mass. As we know that Mask is a 32-bit number in which the n leftmost beast are 1s and 32 minus n rightmost bits are zeros. But in classless addressing, the mask for a block can take any value from 0 to 32. In IPv4 addressing, a block of addresses can be defined as x.y.z.t slash n in which x.y.z.t defines one of the addresses and the slash n defines the mask. So the addresses and the slash n notations completely define the whole block. The first addresses 
the last addresses and the number of addresses. We will see the first addresses means what. The first addresses in the block can be found by setting the 32 minus n right mode beast in the binary notation of address to zeros. So we can see it is you see an example. So this rightmost bit we have set it as a zeros. Okay. So slash n value of n is 28. 32 minus 28 right mode beast to 0. So set this rightmost bit is 0. So we will get the we can found the first address. Now in the similar way the last address. The last address in the block can be found by setting the 32 minus n rightmost bits in the binary notation of the address to ones. Here also n value of n is 28. So a binary representation of given address is this and we know that n is 28. So set 32 minus 28 right mode bits to 1. Here in this example, we can see that the right most bits are set to 1. So in this way, we can found the last address. And the number of address means the number of address in the block can be found by using the formula 2 raised to power 32 minus n. Here the value of n is 28 in our example. So which means the number of address is 2 raised to power 32 minus 8. So total 16 number of addresses that we can see in this example. Next we will discuss is the network address. Network address is the very important concept in IP addressing. When an organization is given a block of address, the organization is free to allocate the address to the devices that needs to be connected to the internet. The first address in the class however is normally treated as a special address. The first address is called the network address and defines the organization network. It defines the organization itself to the rest of the world. So here in figure we can see the router has two address. This router has two address. One belongs to the granted block and the other belongs to the network that is at the other side of the router. So the organization network is connected to the internet via this router. Next part is network address translation. So the thing is that why there is a need of network address translation. Basically the number of home users and small business that wants to use the internet is ever increasing. In the beginning the user was connected to the internet with a dial up line which means that he or she was connected for a specific period of time an internet service provided with a block of addresses could dynamically assign a address to his user an address was given to a user when it was needed but the situation is different today home users and small business can be connected by an ADSL line or cable modem. In addition, may or may or may not ha uh, happy with one addresses. So many have created small networks with the several hosts and needs an IP address for each host. With the shortage of address, this is a serious problem. So a quick solution to this problem is network address translation. Network address translation enables a user to have a large set of addresses internally and one address or a small set of address externally. The traffic inside can use the larger set and the traffic outside the smaller set. To separate the addresses used inside the home or business and the one used for the internet, the internet authority have reserved three set of addresses which we call it as a private address that is shown in this table. Any organization can use an address out of this set without permission from the internet authorities. Everyone knows that these reserve address are for a private network. They are unique inside the organization 
but they are not unique globally. No router will forward a packet that has one of these address as the destination address. The site must have only one single connection to the global internet through the router that runs the NAT software. And that is shown in this figure. The site must have only one single connection to this global internet through a, a router that runs the NAT software. So this figure shows the private network uses private address. So this is the private address which is used by this private network. The router that connects to the internet to the global address uses one private address and one global address. So this is 200.24.5.8 uh, is the global address which is used by this router. The private network is transparent to the rest of the internet. And the rest of the internet sees only the NAT router with the address 200.24.5.8. So we will see how the address will be translated from this private address to global address. So in address translation, all the outgoing packets go through the NAT router. So that is shown in the figure. This is the NAT router and NAT software is installed in this router. So all the outgoing packets go through the NAT router which replace the source address in the packet with the global NAT addresses. All incoming packets are passed through the NAT routers which replace the destination address in the packet. That means the NAT router global address with the appropriate private address that is shown in this figure. Now, the question is that the reader may have noticed that translating the source address for outgoing packets is straightforward. But the question is that how does the NAT router know the destination address for packet coming from the internet? So, for this purpose, this router has the trans translation tables. There are various forms of translation tables using one IP address, using a pool of IP address, using both IP address and the port numbers. So by using these translation tables, the router knows the destination address for the packet which is coming from the internet. So in this way, the network address and translation works. Thank you.